Wesley's journal is a great resource for understanding who Wesley was, getting underneath the surface of the image we receive of him, the cold, austere, administrative genius who established Methodism, and understanding more of what he was actually like. The drawback to the journal is that it was written carefully by Wesley for publication. This was what he wanted you to read and how he wanted you to understand the way things were. But there are eight volumes of it, and in eight volumes, the truth is going to get out, whatever. If you're writing eight volumes about your own life, what you're like will be revealed, more or less. And it is during the journal. Uh, what I've discovered, or one of the things I've discovered, I would say, reading the journal, is his wit. That's not what people think of when you think of Wesley. You don't necessarily think of him as a funny bloke, you know, but he's full of wit and humour. Well, even when he's being cutting and rude about people and places, as he is throughout the journal, he does it humorously and with enormous good nature, really. And the other thing I've discovered is the development of Wesley, because you see him in the first volume or two, yes, he is a rather cold, hard-nosed character who determined to live this thoroughgoing Christian life. He vows never to smile or laugh again if he can possibly help it. And well, you see that change and you see this warmth coming in, this genuine affection for people, this concern for how they are, for their conditions. And that grows, that love really and affection grows throughout the journal. So that uh, so by the end, people are lining the streets to, to see him when they know he's coming to, to their town in his old age. And you don't line the streets for, for somebody who is a bit of a hard-nosed administrator. And so the journal is terrific for really getting underneath the surface and understanding something more of, of what he's like.